And basically, we're going to talk about some common steps, common steps uh, to web security. Um, we could call it common sense steps, but these are things that may or may not necessarily occur to all of us until we have a problem. My audio is low. Okay, let's see. All right, how about now? All right, very good. Yeah, th these are these are all going to be things that uh, I think probably will not occur will not occur to you until you have a problem. And so we want to talk about some things you can do ahead of time before there's a problem. And some of them are going to cost you a little money, and some of them will not. But if you think about the time and the money you're going to spend on the back end when you're trying to recover not only your data, when you're trying to recover some of the time you lost, the, the, the little money that you're probably going to have to pay in order to do any of what I'm going to be talking about tonight is going to really help you, and you'll be glad that you paid it. Now, there are no affiliate links or anything like that, so I'm not here to sell you anything. What I am here to do is to give you some things to think about and give you some things to work on in order to secure your online business. And I want to say this at the outset, there's no way to fully secure your business. And some things I'm going to suggest you have some other people do for you. And other things I'm going to suggest that you get started on doing them. And if you feel like, well, I don't want to spend the money on that right now, then you put it on the list of things that you are going to spend money on. Right? So so that's that's kind of where we're going to approach this here tonight. So let's talk about so to be secure. What costs business owners like you and I the most is the time involved with the security issue. So any any time we've got to deal with something, yeah, there's, there's probably going to be money. Most of us have figured out how to protect ourselves, and we got credit card protection and all those things, and we'll be able to get the money back typically, right? You know, identity theft and other things like that. Um, there there are firms out there who deal with that. That's I don't think is the most. I, I don't even think that's the most pressing thing for you if you're in business, an online business or a brick and mortar business. It is the time you lose. It's opportunity cost. It's time that you've got to spend not doing your business. It's time you've got to spend not working on the things that you were working on. It's time you've got to spend reestablishing relationships and all those things that you were progressing on until you had the security issue and you got to stop to deal with it. So really it's the time involved. And therefore, taking precautions is the best way to preserve your time and your business. So that's really what we're talking about here tonight. Um, what can you do to secure yourself when you're making payments, right? What can you secure yourself when you're taking payments? Right? What can you secure your? What can you do to protect yourself against hardware loss? There's not a lot, but there are some things that you can do, and they're not always going to be the things that are going to be most obvious. Um, this is not going to be solely about securing your WordPress website. So, in, in fact, most of this is not going to be about WordPress. Now, there, there, there are entire courses about WordPress. We're not going to fully talk about WordPress here tonight. The, the technical things that you can do for your WordPress site, and here is where I'm going to suggest that you spend a little money. You, you need to hire someone to do these things and be done with it. Rather than getting in and, and messing around with HT, HTA access files and all those things, I'm sure you're capable of it. But as an online business owner, as a brick and mortar business owner, these are things that really, they're not going to cost you to have somebody done, have you have someone do them for you. And I'm going to run through these things. I'm going to run through these things now. I'm changing the, uh, changing the database. Right, making a database secure again. That's something you could pay somebody to do. Securing your uh, WP config file, and again, some of these things you might feel like, well, these are sort of over my head. Maybe you should explain these things. Actually, I'm really encouraging you to have somebody do these things. And these are all things that will make your WordPress site more secure. Securing your plugin directory, right? That's something that you can do again to make sure that somebody isn't getting into your plugins and you're not getting some script in there that's going to cause you problems. Securing your admin file, um, not showing the version of your WordPress, right? Logging in using HTTPS. Most of you all know how to do that. If you're going to have membership sites, right? Limiting the login attempts. So in other words, when you go out and you buy a membership plugin or you go out and you buy something that's going to be on WordPress, uh, you want to limit the number of people and the number of times people can log into your site. 
And it, it might seem to be a hassle to the customer, but typically when somebody's got to log in 10 or 15 times, sometimes it's legitimate, but oftentimes it's because either they're working with somebody else or because they're sharing your account. And again, um, what you're trying to do is securing your site. And really, we're not talking about necessarily securing your income here. We're just talking about the kind of things that can cause you problems in terms of losing money and data loss. Um, hiding your login errors. Um, securing your computer. We're going to actually talk about that and preventing script injection, right? And securing your HTA access file, right? All those are things that, again, these are things that when it comes to your WordPress website, if you don't know how to really do these things, uh, I, um, I wouldn't even, I would not even go into trying to learn how to do them. Uh, typically, you can probably find somebody on Upwork. You can find someone on any of the freelancing sites. They can put together a security bundle for you, and then you can go through all of these things, either use these things as a checklist or um, add on some things that you want to have done. And yeah, Brian's talking about like the like the crypto miners. Yeah, exactly. Um, passwords, right? So let's talk about passwords for a second. Um, just just uh, without without fail, I'm going to tell you to use a password manager. Right. And the reason you want to use a password manager is because all the passwords you're going to have to set up, whether it's for yourself or somebody else, then if you set up simple passwords, they're going to be easy to guess. So now is the era where how many most of you on this call, most of you who are listening to me, you probably have right now in operation. I'm going to guess no less than 20 passwords than you've got to use. Or in, in other words, you have probably about 20 logins you've got to do. Right. If, if that if that's if that's you put a one in the question box, if you can, you can probably think of about 20 or getting up to 20, then you're going to want to start thinking about using a password manager. Right. And so um, and Bri Brian's asking, um, will your web host uh, do this for you? Uh, Brian, uh, do, do you do you mean um, do you mean a password manager or do you mean some of the stuff for WordPress? Do you mean some of the stuff? Are you asking about the stuff for WordPress or for, for passwords? If you're talking about the stuff for uh, for um, for your web hosts, well, your web hosts, yeah, yeah, for WordPress. Some, sometimes your web hosts will do all of that for you. That's exactly right. If you have a, a, a virtual private server, I'm going to talk about that a little bit, then more than likely they'll add that on as a service, whether it's on a regular basis, on a monthly basis, or they'll do it for you on a, for a one-time fee. So, yeah, that's a great point. Um, typically, that's a service that your 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 web host will offer, and whatever it costs, it's probably going to be worth it, right? Yeah, and Dana's saying she's used uh, RoboForm for years. That's actually one of the ones that I would suggest that you really take a strong look at. If you don't have a password manager, um, you you can get RoboForm. They will create secure passwords for you. They will give you a master password. Then all you've got to do is remember one password, and then you'll have access to all your other passwords. If you get in a jam and you can't use your personal computer, you can actually get to one. You can actually get to your RoboForm through your mobile device. You can also get to your RoboForm through the web. So you can get access to all your passwords in a secure online location. So, um, so, so RoboForm is kind of the I'd say it's it's one of the uh, it's one of the the, the most popular. Um, I I don't know if I'd rate it the best because I don't know which one is best or not. But I've used RoboForm for years. A number of people are people who are into online marketing and they have a hundred hundreds of passwords to to uh, to to log into. Then uh, it's it is a it is a great uh, it's a great facility to use. Um, there's another service called LastPass. LastPass, pretty much the same thing. Uh, like RoboForm, and then there's another one called One Password, and I think that's uh, sp uh, peculiar to the Mac, right? Or to to the Apple universe. B but regardless, it really does not matter which one you use. As far as this uh, this session is going to go, you need to get one though. Um, it, um, creating an insecure password, you were really asking for trouble, and you were asking for somebody to be able to guess it. And anything that's going to be like your name or your birthday or your birthday, your name or your daughter's name, your daughter's birthday, all those things, more than likely, and people have, uh, you know, I mean, pe people who are working at this, um, they, they will randomize, you know, you know, different strings and different characters to try to guess your password by brute force, try to get into your online account. So please, if, if you, I think, I think RoboForm is maybe 
$19 for a calendar year. And it's probably going to be what, probably the best $19 you're going to spend. Right. So, so that, that's, if you, if you, if you didn't do anything else beside that one thing and you were to start using the random passwords created by RoboForm for everything, then you will have gone probably, I'd say, two thirds of the way down the line toward securing your, uh, your, 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 your system. Right, and uh, it's uh, Tracy is saying that uh, something called Dash Lane is free. Right, there's something called Dash Lane. I've never heard of Dash Lane, but um, you, you can check it out uh, probably at dashlane.com. Okay, um, and, and when you're going to use these things, allow the random password to be created. So, so, so don't don't get RoboForm or or any of these, and then use it to use your same old password. Right, use you know use a random password. Um, if, if you're going to have others using your stuff, you're going to have other people logging in, please let somebody uh, create your passwords for other people. So, so don't let them uh, create something that's going to be insecure. You create it for them. And then, and then think carefully about whether or not you're going to allow somebody to change their password, right? Because again, especially if somebody's got access and, and you, you wouldn't think about this otherwise, but, but think about this for a second. Let's say that I am your, your virtual assistant. And you give me access to my account, and you give me a random password, but at the same time, what's the first thing I'm going to do when you give me a random password? Right? What, what, what do you think I'm going to do as your VA if you give me the opportunity? I'm going to change that password. I'm going to, and what am I going to change it to? I'm going to change it to something that's going to be easy for me to memorize. And listen, um, I, I would not give anybody the, the opportunity if they're going to be um, working, your, working for you as, a, as an assistant working for you, kind of alongside of you, especially if you're going to give them admin privileges. Do not give people the opportunity to change their password. Right? Does that make sense? Do you understand why I'm saying that? So if you get that, please put the number two in the question box if you understand where I'm coming from there. Um, typically, um, um, w one of the things that people do when they have people, virtual assistants working for them, is they'll just give them access to their admin account. Do not do that. Right? And again, I mean, I understand that's common sense, but you'd be surprised, you know, when you get busy and you get in the jam and then you've got to go and you've got to create a password and a login and all that stuff. And you think, okay, you know, I'll just give you access to my account. You just use mine. Please do not do that. And I can tell you horror stories from my own personal perspective, um, things of times when I've done that. And I cannot, I can't think of a time when it didn't come back to bite me. So, so again, please do not give use of your main account to anything, right? Always create another account for somebody. And if you're going to buy something, right, um, pay for the additional user. W whatever you're paying for the additional user is going to be worth the money. It's typically going to be temporary. If you're going to buy some kind of software, if you're going to buy access to a service, you need to ask them. You need to find out if you're going to be able to give uh, access to an additional user because if you're not, then that means then that you're locked into that software and you're never going to be able to help have somebody use, uh, help you use it. And, 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 and typically when someone sells you something, what they're trying to do is they're trying to limit access to it. They don't want a lot of people logging in, but for your standpoint, what you need is flexibility to be able to offer somebody else a login. Right. So, so again, keep that, please keep that in mind. Again, these are really common sense steps, but they're common sense steps that, you, 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 you wouldn't think to take them until you have a problem. Let's talk about purchases and payments. Purchases and payments. You're gonna, obviously going to have to buy things for your business um, when, when, uh, when possible. You want to keep direct access to your main accounts one step removed. So wherever all your money is, wherever, wherever the, the, the bulk of your cash is, the, the, the access to your account, you want to be one step removed from that. So in other words, um, if, if you're going to uh, connect something to, let's say, you know, uh, let's say Apple Pay or PayPal or something like that, you want to move funds from your main account into a business account and then connect the business account. Does that make sense? You do not want to have your main account connected to anything. So if you get that, please put the number one in the question box. Again, one of these things, is th there are things that you would not think to do until you have a, until you have a crisis. So again, 
what I'm saying to you is that you, you, you want to connect your main account to a business account and then connect your business account to your stuff, right? Whatever your stuff is and wherever you're going to be making your payments and your purchases from. Um, so again, yeah, connect that business account to your PayPal. So everything, all your money is one step removed from PayPal and even your merchant. Okay, then only use one account for your online activity. And the reason I'm going to tell you that is because um, you need to be watching that activity on that account on a daily basis. So in other words, you should be getting email activity. You should be e getting email updates on that account. But if you've got 10 accounts and you're trying to watch all 10, impossible to keep up with especially when you've got things coming in, you've got promotions, you've got sales, you've got uh, invitations, all this other stuff, um, almost impossible to keep up with if you've got 10 accounts. If you've got one account where you can watch the activity, you'll be able to notice when there is a problem, right? And, and a problem will stand out for you. I can tell you a story about when someone actually accessed my, uh, access an iTunes account while they simultaneously accessed an Amazon account and the only reason I saw it, and I cannot even say I was all that smart, is because I've only got one account that I'm watching on a daily basis. When the when the activity was happening, right? I was in. I was. I was. I was literally locking the 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 thief out in real time, right? So so that thief was there, and I was locking them out in real time. The only reason I was able to see it is because I had um, one account, and the and the account was literally showing me the activity that was happening as it was happening. So again, try to keep everything down to one account. Try to have that account so that you get notifications by email when something is happening. Does that make sense? So if you get that, please put the number two in the question box if you get that. Okay, probably the other catch-all is then uh, reconcile that account on a daily basis. Reconcile that account on a daily basis. Now, you don't have to um, – you, 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 when I say reconcile, I'm not talking about manually. Um, get a program like QuickBooks or Quicken. Right, uh, and just reconcile the account. Typically, you can do that with one push of a button. It'll take you less than a minute, right, to reconcile your account. How many of you all use QuickBooks or Quicken, or or something like it? So, if you do, put the number three in the question box, right? If you if you right, so so most of you do. You should be reconciling yeah, QuickBooks or Quicken, right? You should be reconciling that account on a daily basis. You should be hitting the button. Letting it see, seeing what's happening so that you can take a look at what's happening on your account. And then, you know, when something's out of whack, you'll see it. Right now, I'm going to suggest you avoid using directly, directly using your debit card or your credit card when possible. Only use that when you have to. Right. So, so again, I'm not saying don't use it. I'm not saying that to, I'm saying that when you don't have to use it, don't use it. What I'm saying in, 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 uh, in, instead of that, use your PayPal account. Why? Number one, if you've already taken the step of being one step removed from your from from your money, and number two, you're going to have to log in in order to use it. Um, typically, um, you, now you can still be stolen from in PayPal, but it's going to be a lot harder to do that um, when you've taken some of the steps we've, we've been talking about. So again, if, if you if you don't have to use your debit card, um, try to use your PayPal card when possible, not your PayPal card, your PayPal account when possible, and pay uh, online. Let's talk about cloud backups, cloud backups. And, and this is going to save you time. It's going to save your data. Right? Most, of a, most of us probably could survive a hard drive crash. Right? That, that's not the hard part, surviving a hard drive crash and getting all the, uh, all the programs back. The hard thing is, again, is the time you're going to lose. And it takes a long time to recover everything in terms of your data and get all your hard drive back to, you know, back to normal. Okay, whatever, 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 that's anything. Anything you're saving right now to an external hard drive or your hard drive, back it up to a cloud on a regular basis, whatever regular is to you. I'm going to say no later, no less than a week. You can do it uh, every two days or every three days. That's better, right? So again, you know, cl cloud storage now is inexpensive. So there really is no excuse not to be backing up whatever you have to, uh, on an external hard drive uh, to uh, to a cloud drive, right? Um, anything that's physical. Now, of course, cloud drives can fail too. Anything that's physically on your computer in your house can fail and fail fast. 
and um, can, uh, can, can pretty much go very quickly and be unrecoverable. Right. How many of you have ever had um, an unrecoverable external hard drive? So if you've ever had that, please put the number four in the question box. I know probably just about everybody here has had one or a thumb drive you have not been able to recover. And, and if you think about the time that you've had to take in order to get all that information back, not worth it. Right. Definitely not worth it. So 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 pr one of the things you can really do and you really should do is start and, and you can find typically find some automated process where you can back all this up to your cloud storage. Um, you can get uh, cheap cloud storage from Google. You can get cheap cloud storage from Microsoft. If you buy, if, if you are an owner of Microsoft Office, right, I think you get it for, I think you get it along with that. So if you pay monthly for Microsoft Office or if you're subscribed to them, then you're gonna, you're gonna get, they're gonna give you one terabyte of space, right? They're gonna give you that five times over. So again, um, if you're if 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 you if you want to think about it this way, I mean, you're thinking, well, no, I don't want to pay monthly for Microsoft Office, but yeah, but if you do, then what you're going to do is you're going to get this one terabyte of hard drives of of uh, of, um, of cloud space, and you're going to get it five times over. It's probably going to be worth it, if nothing but for the cloud space, right? And start backing your stuff up on a on a regular basis. Dropbox is another area. And there's something else called Box. So do, it does not matter which one you use, whichever one is more comfortable for you to set up an automated process where you things get backed up automatically. And I think these days um, you can actually set up everything on your hard drive with, uh, with either Microsoft or Dropbox so that everything that gets saved automatically goes there. Right? Brian says you can do it with S3 also. Yep, you can do it with S3 also. I don't know if it's as seamless, Brian. I think you have to know. I think you have to know a little bit. You got to be a little. You have have a little technical knowledge to do that for S three, but it is available. I agree. Okay, so save information to one folder, right? One folder and back that one folder up to the cloud, right? So again, so so in in other words, the, your top folder will then be your cloud folder. However, you back that up. So so in, instead of running your documents folder. Right, run your documents folder inside of your cloud drive backup. Right, so that that's the way you're going to do things from now on. Because again, what we're what we're trying to do is we're trying to do automatic backups. We we don't want to have to think about this. And and if you if you set this up so that maybe it does, uh, maybe it backs up every so often, doesn't have to back up instantly, then it's not going to take up your your hard drive power. Um, w one thing about HTML, now a number of you probably have HTML sites, you do stuff with HTML, if you do stuff with HTML and you're putting that HTML on your site, uh, keep an exact copy of what's on your server in HTML stored physically on your hard drive or your external hard drive. And again, that should be getting backed up too. Now, now, now be because again, anything that can happen on the web and you're missing that information that you created and you put up there, you're not going to have to struggle to get that information back if you have it backed up on your hard drive, and then you have your hard drive backed up to the cloud. Does everybody, does that make sense to you? So if you get that, put the number five in the question box. So again, you, you've got HTML sites. <clears throat> if you have them hosted, uh, get, get your HTML backed up onto your hard drive. Right, exactly the way it is on your on your server. Exactly the way it is. So, in other words, you're going to make the changes in Dreamweaver or 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 whatever your HTML editor is, and then you're going to make those changes. You're going to save them to your hard drive, and you're going to upload them to your hard drive. Upload them to the FTP through your hard drive, but you're still going to leave them on your hard drive, saved exactly the way they are on your uh, you know in your in your server. So in other words, I'm going to tell you, don't make changes in your server and then not have them on your hard drive, right? So I know you can probably go in, you can go in with FTP, you can edit files. I'm going to suggest you not do that because you should do all that stuff on your hard drive and get it backed up. Uh, there, you can back, you can create an image and this sometimes takes a special program. Um, if you have a backup program, it typically comes with all PCs now. Um, or it comes with Norton, or it comes with McAfee, or any of your antivirus software, um, you can back an image up 
of your hard drive with all of your install your install program. So again, it's not it's not the whole thing. All it is is an image, and you want to back that image up. And again, you want to do that on a regular basis. Now again, what that does is that helps you to get your hard drive back fast, right? So again, the point isn't that you can't get it back without doing this. The point is getting it back fast because trying to get your time back when you're trying to to install, let's say, you know, 30 programs on your PC is incredibly expensive. Um, what app does this? Um, I think it is, there is an app with Norton and there's an app with McAfee. Here's what I'll do, Lee. Uh, in, I will put this in the notes to this um, to this uh, to this session, and uh, I will I will add to the notes uh, applications that do this that create an image of your hard drive. Right, great question. Okay, and then set your backup um, to happen automatically when you're away or when you're sleeping. Right. So in other words, if if you know you're going to go, let's say you're going you're going you're going to uh, be sleep, or you're not going to work on your PC from Friday until, let's say, Sunday, or if you're going to take Sundays off, then that's when you want your backup to happen. So whenever you're not going to be using your PC for an extended period of time, typically, because a backup takes a long time, then go ahead and do it on that day. Um, it, I think the default on a lot of these programs is that they run Friday at 2 in the morning, but that was when um, we used to live this 9 to 5 lifestyle. <laughs> so Friday at 2 in the morning was a safe time. You may be working on your online business at 2 in the morning on Friday. So that means then what you want to do is you, you want to have it to set to go whenever you're not going to be at your PC for an extended period of time, right? So cloud backup, whatever you can. All right, let's talk about hardware backup. Hardware backup. Uh, hardware backup will help you to protect against data losses, right? And this is probably the toughest thing uh, for, 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 uh, for people to deal with. Because it's almost impossible to get this information back. It's almost impossible to get this back when you're doing it. Um, what you're going to want to do is you want to make sure that you're going to want to have a power protector. And all this is a little plug that sticks into the wall that catches the surge, right? You can get one of those for home. You can get one of those for travel. I suggest you get both. Whenever you travel, you should be traveling with a power protector. And this sticks directly into the wall. It's very small. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to protect you against the surge. In addition to that, right, now I'm not saying or, and or, I'm saying in addition, you should also get a power strip or a surge protector. Right, again, I'm talking belt and suspenders here, but <clears throat> belt and suspenders uh, on this because you, you want to make sure that you catch the surge. If, if the power protector doesn't catch it, the surge protector should. Right, again, same thing. If you, you need one for home, and you also need one if you travel. So if you're, if you're going to take your laptop and you're going to go to a hotel for the weekend, right, get a, a power protector and a surge protector, please, right? So don't, don't take the one from home. Leave it plugged in where it is. Don't move it, right? Because when you come back home, what will happen is you'll forget to plug the surge protector in. You'll be in a rush to get back to work. Um, you'll be, you know, it'll be in your bag. It'll be packed away. Don't do that, right? Get one for traveling. Get one for 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 home and leave them where they are right now <clears throat> this is probably going to be uh, the, the thing that most of us don't do but we need to do it folks um it's called un uninterruptible power supply you must do this um anything can happen right anything can happen and typically um it's, it's you're not going to have a power surge but you could have a power outage or you could just have something where something blows a fuse. And what happens is your, 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 it can be your anything. It can be your router. It can be your PC. It can be your, your, uh, your cordless mic. It can be anything. When there's a, when, when it just, when the power just goes out and goes away, then something happens inside of electronics. I don't know what it is and you cannot predict when it's going to go bad. So an uninterruptible power supply is basically a battery charger. And so your, 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 your electronics are plugged into the uninterruptible power supply. And so basically when the power goes, you've probably got a good hour or two, depending on how much you pay for it, where you're going to be able to get up and then go and readjust things and figure out what to do about the power. Right. So, so if, if you're having uh, issues, then you're going to want to get that uninterruptible power supply. It's probably going to run you about 50 to a hundred dollars. It's again, going to save you from data loss 
if there is a problem. And again, again, um, I've, I've gone through three routers until I, until I figured this out, until it was figured out for me. All right. So again, um, you can get one for home. And, and once again, now again, now this is, a, you don't have to do this. You could probably say this is just a little overkill, but, um, you can get one for traveling too. Now, if you're, if you're going to be traveling, you're going to be someplace for any length of time. Hotels are very unpredictable. Right. Um, Brian, yeah. So th- there are some that you can get, Brian, that are not in the big heavy box. Um, you can get some that are a little lightweight. They're making them now so that they don't, they're not all going to be big and heavy. I know one that's about 50 bucks that is probably the size of probably an oversized plug. Right. So you can get them. They're getting smaller. But yeah, I'm basically talking about the big heavy box. So that's hardware backup. Now I'm going to talk a little bit of, again. Now, when it comes to WordPress, once again, I, I'm going to suggest, and, and someone suggested that there uh, is a service with your host, um, that you can have them do some of this stuff for you. Now I'm going to talk about some of the common sense stuff that you can do, right? Some common sense stuff that you can do with WordPress. So the, the complicated things, anything that has to do with your files, has to do with the technical part, have somebody else do that for you. Now, this stuff is stuff you can do. One of the things that I'm going to suggest that you do is when you have hosting, you want to have hosting that you can use to go back in time, right? So, so you might have to pay a little more for the hosting. You know, you, uh, in some cases, um, you might have to get a virtual private server with somebody. Um, you're going to pay a little more. You're going to get a little more service, and you're going to have storage that you're not using. You're going to have hosting you're not using. Understand that. But well, here's what you're getting. If you have a problem, yes, you, yes, by, by, by not getting this, you do save some dollars. But by having this, what happens is when you have a managed hosting situation and you have a problem, what they can do is they can go back in time and it's part of your account that you pay for. Okay. So again, uh, this is, this is, this is stuff that will cost you some. But will not. There's no price tag you can put on your time, especially in an online business where you're trying to get it back. Um, passwords. Again, we've already talked about that. This is where you come back to RoboForm, making sure your passwords are complicated. Uh, simply, um, keep WordPress updated. Now, th- this could be an issue when you're trying to, uh, y- you know, WordPress has. If you got some plugins, you got a theme that may not have been updated yet to go with the uh, with the uh, the, the uh, new security update. But if there is a WordPress security update, typically is because they found something, as they found something that could be of, I- I'd say, that-, that could be harmful to you if you do not change it. So I'm gonna say that in some cases you want to err to the side of keeping WordPress updated. Now, again, now if you choose not to update WordPress because you've got some plugins, you've got a theme that may fail as a result of it, then you're, you're going to want to really be careful about how much time you allow to lapse between the time you update WordPress, between the WordPress update and the time you actually do update it. You uh, first start a WordPress site. Uh, I think there is a Hello World post. Delete that. There's a uh, common page. Delete that right away. Delete. Uh, I think there there used to be a common comment. You could delete that. So anything that's in that site to start with, delete the stuff there when you get started. Right. Delete everything because again, hackers try to use that in order to get to your site because they know people don't delete that stuff. So again, as soon as you get into the side of your site, delete those two uh, those two items. Use updated themes and plugins from trusted vendors. Now this is a little hard. Um, I know that, you know, these days we all like to buy toys and we all like to buy cool plugins. If you don't trust the vendor, don't, don't put it on your site is all I can tell you, right? And, and, and trying to get somebody to give you support when your site has already gone sideways is too late. So, so if you know, or if you don't know that the, that the vendor can be trusted, I, I don't care how cool the plugin is, don't buy it or at minimum don't put it on your site until you get some verification that it's not going to cause you any problems virus scan all plugins right virus scan all plugins any themes um and and accounts you're not using on your wordpress site delete them right so so again so if there's there anything um that's on there that that uh that that you're 
either, let's say you were testing something or you allowed somebody to have an account or you had a theme on there and you were looking at it, delete it right away. Um, I think I said delete unused accounts. Um, th- there's a, there's a section on there where you can, you can say you're, you're not going to let anybody sign up, create their own account. Right. So, so don't let anybody sign up, create their own account. You create the account for them or you have a, a third party program to do that. So don't let anybody create their own account for your site unless it is just absolutely necessary. And typically what you're going to do is you're going to have, you're going to have a plugin to do that, but don't allow anybody to find your site. Um, back up your site on a regular basis. They're free and paid plugins. So just go into WordPress. <laughs> <laughs> go into WordPress and back it up on a regular basis. Brian says, I'm scaring you. I don't mean to scare you, Brian. <laughs> I don't mean to. But um, you do need to do these things, right? You do need to do these things. Um, back up your site on a regular basis, right? So so you can get free of paid plugins. I think there's something called Backup Buddy. It's going to cost you a little bit. Um, or you can get a free plugin to at least back up your data on a daily basis, Right, so so, and you can get that data back very easily. Um, install WordPress, WordFence. WordFence is free inside of WordPress. So again, all you've got to do is to go into your plugins. Um, you can install WordPress Fence. I think it might make your site run a little slower, so you're going to want to check that out. But WordPress, WordFence will help you to secure your site. A keys met. Okay, so make sure, you know, um, you, you, typically when you first get onto WordPress, they'll ask you if you want a keys mat. You do want to go ahead and sign up for that because you want to black, uh, block any spam comments and people trying to get backlinks. Backlinks, people don't do that as much anymore, but they will do it if your site has authority. So, again, um, don't let anybody comment on your site that's not part of your site. If you don't want to have comments on there, then I just say, you know, disable it. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about um Customer financial data and taking payments on your site, right? And this is this is where we're gonna we're gonna finish up here. When, when you're gonna sell a product, and and this is one of the reasons why using an affiliate network in the marketplace um, is is a smart thing to do, right? And because you you if you don't want to, if you don't have to, you don't want to hold any customer data on your site, right? Uh, and and this is why we use these affiliate networks like ClickBank. JVZoo Warrior Plus, and we expect them to make sure the site's secure and their customer and, and that and that financial information is secure, right? Because we don't want to have that on our site because we want to be responsible for it, right? So again, so holding the data on your site without fully securing it can open you up to some responsibility. So again, think about whether or not you want to take payments on your site directly. Now, typically, if you're going to take PayPal, Right, that you're not taking it directly. If you're going to have it go through JVZoo Warrior Plus or ClickBank or Zaxa, you're not taking it directly. You're having it go through a third party or a shopping cart. So again, using shopping carts is important because again, you are you are limiting your your responsibility and your liability because um, they're going to be holding the data to sensitive customer information. Does everybody make sense? Does that make sense, everybody? So if you get that, please put the number six in the question box. If you get that. Right, so use a secure shopping cart. Right, so use a secure shopping cart. Just in the very same way that I said that you want to be careful about uh, using your debit card and taking your credit card uh, and, and uh, using your credit card and debit card, uh, be careful about taking them. Right, if you don't have to take them, don't take them. The, the reason is, you know, one of the things one of the things that makes PayPal good for merchants, um, and you know, there are all kinds of there are all kinds of things that. PayPal can be problematic with. I understand that. Um, one of the things that PayPal does extremely well is it isolates you right, or insulates you. So in other words, the individual has to log in and process, you know, before they can make a, tra- make a, uh, make a, pr- a transaction, right? So, so it's almost, almost kind of hard for someone to, to, to I, I guess, get um, to the point where somebody can get in their PayPal account and then use their PayPal account. That's just harder to do than uh, having a credit card. Because, again, um, anybody can get a hold of a credit card and just buy stuff from you. It's really hard to do that with PayPal. right? So, again, I'm not saying don't take credit cards. Again, I know that, you know, um, uh, it, it is you – can, you, can, you can make more if you take credit cards. I understand that. Um, however, if you don't have to take them, you don't have to take them. Right. So so that's just that's just going to kind of be 
um, something that's going to have to be a business decision because, again, you know, what you're trying to do, of course, is you're really trying to make sure that, you know, you're not losing time trying to, to, to recover something that, you know, you could have, you could have done by heading off at the beginning. 